Paul, well, we'll start with the fitness side of things. Has this um, extended break, if you like, helped the likes of John McAtee, who we're all bit back in the squad, but perhaps went quite up to full speed? Yeah, he certainly managed to get some more training in the legs um, ahead of the weekend. So from that point of view, um, it's been good. I think Lenny's another one who's got some um, more training in. But we've, we have got uh, a few concerns going into the game and, and prior to, to us travelling that as you could appreciate it's Thursday morning um, not quite sure exactly where we are I'm hoping to find out very soon on that for definite uh, but also maybe see how one or two get on in training today So these are new concerns? Yes they are yeah we've um, trained Monday um, and Tuesday, Tuesday we had some 11 v 11 and we picked up a, a couple of knocks within that so it's you know part and parcel of it but uh, I just as we speak there are a couple of lads that I'm not sure stood here whether or not they'll be able to be part of the squad or not. Are you going to mention the names on that? <laughs> Surprisingly no, we'll keep that uh, to ourselves because even if they are fit you know if you don't want anyone particularly firing into someone to, to just check the fitness, so um, yeah, we'll we'll see. But we you know we have got obviously a, a decent sized squad, um, but you know you want everyone fit in a bit. Sure. You mentioned Lenny there. How, how's he doing? Yeah, he seems good. He seems good. So fingers crossed he can he can stay fit and you know really get going now, um, like he did when we brought him back to the club. He took him a little while to get up to speed, but then stayed fit and I think benefited from from that, you know, a, a clear run without injury. You know, not only natural that, that it would be the case, but certainly in Lenny's I think it's important that he's out there um, training, training hard. So hopefully that can be the case. I saw Max Wright doing laps of the pitch, is he um, is he progressing? So? No, well I think you he's progressing, don't get me wrong, but at the same time he, he probably noticed he was doing laps of the pitch with uh, Chris Doigan and I think maybe Ben Davis. That's right. And them two definitely aren't fitting in the squad. Um, although they're doing more than what I currently am. So uh, yeah, with Max it's not a case of him being fit that you know that big difference between being able to do that and, and obviously doing football movements, striking the ball, checking, turning, all those things. And with Scannell and Grant, is it a similar situation still with those in terms of where they are? They've, they've trained, they, they did the 11 v 11, which, you know, that was certainly, you know, we, we don't just tailor training for, for, for those players, but we said we couldn't get a game and maybe weather conditions, I think, not the worst thing, but so we had kind of almost, not a, quite an in-house game, but certainly so, uh, 11 v 11 as I said and, and those lads took part in that so that will have benefited them in terms of get, again getting more training but more I guess game specific load um, because the, the sort of distance is covered were quite high for the period of time because it's not a stop start as a as it would be on a, on a Saturday afternoon or, or Tuesday evening so it was a, a good workout for them. How are the new lads settling in? Your two latest acquisitions. Yeah, good. Um, I think you know Sam obviously knows Riley, so it's easy from that point of view. And nice lad, um, works hard. And and Jordan's you know more experienced. Um, been at a few clubs before. He knows a couple of the lads uh, anyway, like Luke Waterfall, Sean Pearson certainly. Um, seems to have settled in very very easily, very quickly. Jordan, someone you consider thrown straight in, I'd imagine. Yeah, I mean, I think as often is the case, and you know, people will have their ways of working, but I think he will want to get him fitter. Uh, said he is a fit lad naturally, um, but I think for what probably how we would ask him to play, I think he'd be the first to admit he probably needs some more work on that. Um, but certainly quality wise, which is, is why we brought him here I think in, in the very first day and, and certainly the 11 v 11 he showed some of those qualities that we've, you know, why we brought him here uh, and I'm sure he'll fit in nicely. Do you feel like you've got those options that you want now um, at just the right time I would imagine? We're getting there, I mean I think naturally you don't, you never 
ever, I think, at a point where you're completely happy, you know, you're always looking at ways you can improve, tweak the squad and, and obviously January is coming up and whether you know, we it's through people taking loan players back, conversations that, that will occur, um, and and me looking at what's available. You know, I don't want us to sort of stand still. I want us to see if we can improve further. Naturally, I think I think it's seventeen players we ended up bringing in with the uh, the latest two. Not all going to have been roaring successes. Uh, I think quite a lot of them have done pretty well. Um, but as always, you, you're looking to improve further, um, and that's what we'll try and do uh, in January. So I'm not ruling out bringing more players into the football club, and if that means some exiting, whether that's, like I said, loan players going back to parent clubs, our players going on loan, or, or maybe someone coming in for our players, you know, that's something very open-minded about, and we'll see. Um, you know, we've got a few games to go before we get to that point anyway. Um, and it's, you know, I've said it, we're in a, a tough period now, in terms of games as opponents and how kind of some recent results have gone. We want to see, you know, it's time to dig in and, and try and come through. Yeah, you'll find out a lot about your players during this period, won't you? Yeah, no, I think that's, you know, part, part, parcel of it, kind of what I've just discussed. I think we've had players that have certainly done well and then maybe had a bit of a drop off, that consistency. Now, some of that, again, is always, I think when I'm speaking, it sounds like I'm just talking about the young players, it's not simply that. But those are some that I think it's very understandable and, and natural that they don't have that level of consistency just yet. So, you know, that's something I, I'm looking at and now I would like to shape the squad, you know, moving forward. Um, but as you can imagine with the changes, a lot of changes that we had to make and we're still having players that were under contract. Um, you know, I think it will take time and I don't think it'll still be until, um, you know, even next summer, if you're trying to look further ahead still, still might not get there at that point. But I think each time you're trying to build to, to gradually improve um, and that's always it. Yeah, you talk about the evolution of the squad and of course you've got a lot of players on one year deals. Um, it feels like a big period for, uh, for some of those as well to perhaps force, force the hand in your thinking. Yeah, and you know, some of them might have caught the eye of other people and might be well be thinking about them moving on, you know, whether it's to a higher level or just a different club, whatever it is. Um, again, that's part and parcel of it. We're not, I don't think, quite in the same um, situation as when I was here previously where we'll have to wait until the end of the season um, to, to try and maybe look at one or two players but at the same time what I won't do is if we try to do any business in terms of tying anyone down it won't be all sale like as in oh, we're 2nd, 3rd of December and we're going to offer people contracts or not no, that's not kind of how it works Some will have to understand that uh, but also trying to keep harmony within the squad and also you know a desire to, to keep doing well ultimately as a player you're always self-employed that's the way that how I was sort of brought up probably one of the best pieces of advice I t took from my youth team manager many many moons ago um, and you can only do what you can you do your best hopefully other people witness that and hopefully the club that you're currently at take notice of that and you know that's the opportunity the players have still got. Mm. On to Saturday then uh, Paul, um, tough away game, how do you see the opposition, what sort of challenges are you expecting? Yeah I think before the season speaking to quite a few people and then even within the season just starting, I saw them on the opening day at Stockport, I think there, there's a feeling there that they are geared for promotion, uh, very much so. Um, I think recently they've obviously had some injuries, which again, part parcel of it, but never easy. You know, as managers, we always want as, as well all the squad available and your best team available. But I thought last week on uh, the game against Notts County, they could have you know, quite easily got something from that game. And we know that Notts County are a good side. So I watched on uh, the TV against Salford as well, where 
it probably took him five, ten minutes maybe to start and went behind early in that game and after that did extremely well. So we know it's going to be tough. Uh, again, got some good players, probably a more uh, established squad in terms of continuity. I did a couple, but a lot of them were there last year when I think Daryl started to turn it around. And they, I think that the way that they finished sort of the season in general gave him a lot of optimism coming into this. Uh, and a 100% and one of the teams that will be fighting for at least the playoff spot, if, if not the top one.